Spark Structured Streaming with Kafka. I don't know why I'm doing all these hand movements, movements, but I guess I am. So this video is meant to accompany the blog post where I go through all of the steps in detail, talk about the code. You can cut and paste if you want to run this locally. We're going to run it in IntelliJ. We're going to build a jar and deploy it to a Spark cluster running locally. Again, I'm going to go through this as a demonstration of what's contained in the blog post. Let's do it. First, I'm going to start up the Spark, excuse me, the Kafka cluster. I've got my Docker Compose file here. Uh, so I'll run Docker Compose up, three broker cluster, I believe, with schema registry. While this is starting, we'll take a look at where you can find that. It is on the Docker for Demos repo here. Again, all of this, all these links are in the accompanying blog post. So while we're starting that up, we need to load some data. I'm going to be doing that. If you can notice here, it might be hard to see. I've got multiple tabs running in my terminal windows here. So while we're starting up, I'm going to go over to another terminal window. And I'm going to load up some data in three different topics. The first one, I'm going to load up some CSV data using an existing CSV file. And then I'll pipe that to Kafka Cat. Next, I'm going to load up into a, JSON, a topic that's named JSON in it. Um, and I'm going to load up some JSON data. And finally, we're going to load up um, the third topic example here it's with some Avro data. So I'm going through the demo quickly. All this is in the blog post. Three topics. Each topic has a different type of data. It's either CSV, JSON, or Avro. In the exam example code, then, we're going to go through reading from each one of these different topics. Speaking of which, let's go over now to IntelliJ, now that we have our Kafka cluster running. And we've got some data in three topics. I've imported it here into IntelliJ already. I've imported it as an SBT project and hopefully you can see this clearly in this video I've tried to expand the uh, the font here for us in source main Scala we've got com super glue Kafka examples and simple Kafka so this is what we want to try running in IntelliJ so I'm going to right click on this and hit run simple Kafka I have a lot of other videos about how to actually run and configure in IntelliJ Look for those or ask in the comments and I can point you to it. The first time you run it, you'll get a no class found error. That's to be expected. Now at the top here, you've got simple Kafka. Let's go under edit configurations. Let's include dependencies with the provided scope from our build SBT file. And now let's try running that again. This time, we should see right away, and we do in the out in the console there, that it's running. We've got some println statements, and then we've got some of the output that should happen here quickly. Now, all of this code, let's see, I'll, let me close this out, is pretty simple. Um, simple in that what we're trying to achieve here is just to show you how to read from Kafka using Spark structured screen streaming. So I go through all these different examples, CSV, JSON, and then Avro, and then all this code is broken down and analyzed in the blog post. Now, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions to improve, I am all ears on that. Um, in particular, I left a, some comments here at the bottom about um, some questions around this from Avro function that I couldn't get to work, but it feels like it should be working. It's probably just me. So if you've got some suggestions on that, I'm very much like to hear it. You'll see some variables, some statics, variables um, used throughout. That's in this package object. Um, it's all hard coded. You know, this is for example purposes. Um, you've got a build SBT here file that is configured for things like running in IntelliJ. Um, we've got some different 
versions being set here and um, we've got some things that I had to learn the hardware like um, specifying a particular version of Jackson data bind anyhow this is all meant to be a quick start for you if it's not if you have any questions let me know and I'll be happy to help if I've got the time so we've got the build SBT we've gone over running this in IntelliJ Okay, so let's do this though. Let's build a jar file and deploy that to a Spark cluster running locally. But I think it will, let's just do it because we've got this build SBT file. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm in IntelliJ, let's start up the SBT shell down here at the bottom. I'm looking at a different monitor right here. So while that's starting up, let's go over and start up our um, Spark cluster. As hopefully you can tell from my prompt, I've downloaded Spark 245, I've expanded it. I'm in that directory. I'm going to start up a master. Uh, let's just take a look at the, in a browser here. Let's make sure that's running. We've got no workers. Let's start up a worker. Again, I'm cutting and pasting into a different tab here. Got a worker now, so we should be ready to go. Let's go back to IntelliJ. Um, we've got the assembly plugin, so I'm gonna just hit assembly. This should compile and build this jar. Um, a couple of uh, files, if you're not a fa uh, familiar with that, assembly SBT tells us the version, and then the build SBT file I've got configured for it. Again, I've covered this, I don't know, years ago, I think. Um, so we've got this jar file that has been built. There it is, there's a success message. Now if we go back to the terminal, I'm going to be a little lazy here. Again, this is just a demo. I'm gonna copy that over, that jar file we just built in IntelliJ to my local directory here. I must have already ran this, so I'm gonna say yes, let's run this again. And then let's run a little Spark Submit on it and deploy it. And with that, we should be able to see it. Let's go to 4040. You can see the jobs. We're off and we're running. So I just wanted to show you that with this example, links are all at the bottom. Um, um, you've got the ability to run it locally in IntelliJ and you can build a jar file and deploy it out to your Spark cluster if that's interesting to you as well. So hopefully this helps. Um, I think I mentioned it already, but if not, if you've got comments on how to improve or questions, anything like that, I'd be happy to hear them. Um, so let me know. Thanks. And uh, stay tuned for part two. I'm going to work on part two where we do all of this again, but in a slightly different way. Ooh, the mystery. See you in a bit.